We want to thank you for making another day. And we want to bless. Uh, we want you to bless Pastor Carter as he gives us his word today. And we want you to bless this online ministry and bless all the people that are, that are coming together in your name. <clears throat> and we want to ask you to keep the people who are cold warm, feed the you know help feed the hungry, and let everybody turn their eyes and ears all on you, Lord. And we just want to give you all the praise and the glory. And we love you, Lord. And we come to you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And we give a shout out to Ryan and Tara and Jenna and their household. And um, praise God. Uh, we know you all are getting snow up there in the north. And you know, this snow is, uh, this snowstorm is 1,800 miles long, stretching from Tennessee up to Maine. And so uh, a lot of people are going to be impacted by the snow, but um, trust in the Lord. This too shall pass. Trust in the Lord. Praise God. Um, we want to thank God. Anyone have a testimony, anything you want to share, any miracles, anything God has done? Uh, we'd like to ask you to come on and share that with us, would you please? Somebody can come on and say, I woke up this morning. That's a miracle. Okay, well, that'll be our testimony. Hey, Wes, come on and say hello to us. Hello? Okay, we have him maybe come on a little later on. Okay. Um, okay. That's the son. He lives in New Jersey. I want him to greet us from New Jersey. Megan, come on and say hello to us, will you please? Good morning, church. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Megan. Hi, how's everybody doing? You feeling any better, Pastor? Oh yes, oh yes. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. All right. Well, as they say in Georgia, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm feeling a lot better too. I appreciate all the prayers. That's great. That's great. Hey, we love you, Megan. We thank God for you. Um, praise God. Austina, oh, come on, say hello to us, Dustina. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Church. Um, as you said, I'm just blessed to be awake this morning and. We're trying to stay warm, and as soon as church is over, we're going to go out and play in the snow for a little while. Praise God. You're going to build your snowman, huh? Yeah, if it's even makeable. You know how that snow is nowadays. It ain't as good as it used to be. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, the old-fashioned snow is slushy, and you can make a snowball. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, send somebody back in the house with a hard snowball. Yeah. Well, we can't make snow cream anymore. Last year I tried to make it, and it just didn't taste right. I don't know if it's the chemicals they spray in the air or what. It's not just good anymore. So we're just going to do away with that this year. Okay. It used to be safe to eat snow, snow, snow cream, but you can't do that anymore. Hey, give our love to your family. Happy birthday, Destiny. Thanks. Happy birthday. Thank you. All right. God bless you all. Okay, okay. We're going to look at today, um, um, all this year, the Lord has me focusing on building a firm foundation. And the Holy Spirit said there are many people who are <coughs> coming into the body of Christ, but many need training. And so, and, and God said, imagine now a person 50 years old comes uh, and accepts Jesus as Savior and Lord, but for 50 years 
that person has been living a lot of lies, living because of deception, having been deluded, de deceived, and bringing baggage. Uh, many people come to the Lord with baggage. They have um, uh, habits and, and, and uh, obsessions, and many need to be delivered. And so what's happening in the church is the church is receiving people but not teaching them how to get to know Jesus. And so the Lord said he wants us in this ministry this year to focus on the foundational things, the foundational truths. And so I'm going to be teaching the foundational truths all this year, the foundational truths. And uh, last week I taught a message on why the church needs a strong foundation. Today we're going to look at Christ the solid rock. Next week we're going to teach on how to build on the, on the foundation. And we've got a whole list of, of foundational things uh, so that people can learn how to stand in these last and evil days. As you follow this message today, you will see exactly what the Lord wants to do and why it is important. You may say, well, I know the foundational truth. Well, get a, a, a revision of them so that you can teach others. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a situation where people are getting blown away by the devil, and many of them claim to be Christians. And they're saying, I confess Jesus as Lord, and there are many who confess Jesus and still are plagued by alcoholism, by drugs, by uh, sexual sins. Many are obsessed by gambling and wickedness and can't shake it, can't de get delivered. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer? God wants to nail this thing. Uh, and he said, take the church back to basics. Teach the foundation. And, and the Lord, and as you will see in this message today, many people confess Jesus, and many people uh, 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 profess to be saved, but they're not really saved. They don't know. They don't know Jesus. They don't have a leg to stand on. And so we want to challenge the church. I want to challenge every pastor out there. I want to challenge every believer out there. If you lead someone to the Lord, then you ought to lead them to where they can be fed, where they can be watered, where the Word of God can grow in them, where they can get to know Jesus. Because it's going to be a sin and a shame. It's going to be a big embarrassment, ladies and gentlemen, when people, even people who profess, say with their mouths, Jesus is Lord. When they stand before the Lord, the Lord is going to say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. So we're, we're, this is very critical. This year it's very critical. And these teachings are going to be foundational. We're going to uh, offer messages that a lot of people are not getting because a lot of people are being welcomed into the church. Uh, the pastor shakes their right hand. And, and, and the trustees give them a, pack, give a package of envelopes with their left hand. They get a handshake and a package of offering envelopes. And then some go to the choir, some join the usher board, some join the pastor's aid. And they never learn how to pray. They never learn what the Bible is all about. And yet they call themselves Christians. Then when the winds of adversity blow, when the snowstorms come, when the blizzards of life come, they get blown away. We're going to look at this in this message today. And I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to pay attention so that you can help people. To... So that nobody under the sound of my voice, not even me, will have to be embarrassed when we stand before Jesus and try to cop a plea. There are going to be people trying to make a plea bargain with Jesus. Lord, Lord, do not preach. I fed the hungry. I made a, a prayer cloth and I made prayer blankets and I sent prayer blankets all over the world. And the Lord is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Well, Pastor, show me this in the scripture. I will. I thank you for asking me that. I will show you this in the scripture so that what we preach is of the Lord 
and, and, and that you're not getting anything but the true word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, it's critical. Only 17% of Americans attend church. Listen to this. Only 17% of Americans attend church. Of that 17%. 50% of them do not even attend church two Sundays a month. Come on, somebody. There's something wrong with this thing called Christianity. There's nothing wrong with Jesus. The failure is in the people. The failure is in the church. There is nothing wrong with Jesus. Now, when you look at the statistics, and um, those of you who, who, who will be able to get my new book that's coming out next month, it's called The Online Church and the Great Commission. We have a whole chapter on these statistics. 17% uh, of Americans attend church. Less than that in other nations attend church. And out of that small percentage, only half of them will attend church two Sundays out of a month. And when they do attend church, uh, the question is, are they getting the word of God? Or are they being fed substantial food to keep them in these wicked days? And in most ca cases, the answer is no. And so my heart's concern is about not only about those 17%, what about the 83% of Americans who do not even attend church anymore? What about, and, and many of them call themselves Christians. Why? Because some of them were baptized when they were 12 or 13. Others joined the church uh, and went to Sunday school. Others were born into families where mother was the, the mother of the church or daddy built the church or Uncle Willie uh, uh, founded the church. Ladies and gentlemen, many people, we're just talking about America alone, have been deceived. And in other nations, if 83% of Americans do not attend church, what do you think it's like in England? or in France, or in Germany, or in Russia, or in Afghanistan, or in Syria, or in Israel. What do you think it's like in other nations? And so God is serious. The Holy Spirit wants to get people's attention. And the church, ladies and gentlemen, the church, when I say the church, I'm talking about uh, a corporate church in America and the nations. You know, the folks who call themselves believers, followers of Jesus, Many, ladies and gentlemen, they do not teach the foundations of the word. Many are not teaching people to study. Many are not even requiring people to study. They just receive them in, pat them on the shoulder, give them a pack of offering envelopes, raise the money, help us to raise money, sing on the choir, be an usher, or, or, or do this or do that. And ladies and gentlemen, people are being lost. They are being lost. They are being lost. And so we offer this uh, Back to Basics online church unto God and say, God, use us to the praise of your glory. Not only us, but we offer the serious believers to, as instruments to be used to the praise of your glory. Help us to teach others. Help us to spread your word. Lord God, help us to be faithful to you so that none will be lost. And so we praise God after that introduction. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. My message today is entitled, Christ the Solid Rock. Christ the Solid Rock. Praise God. Christ the Solid Rock. Wasn't that a great song we heard earlier? The wait is over. It's over. Everything's going to be all right. That's consolation. That's encouragement. The wait is over. The wait is over. I heard the Spirit say, it's your time. The wait is over. Walk into your season. Your season is coming. Walk into your season. Hey, Jackie Fisher, we will get the author of that song, and I'll send it to you. And uh, you can find that song and, and, and listen to it on YouTube. Uh, I'll get that to you a little later on. Praise God. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 7, and I, I want to take it all the way to the top of this uh, particular uh, discussion. Matthew seven twenty one, and I'll read down to verses, verse 29. 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. That's enough right there to preach a sermon on. That verse right there. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful things? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. This is Jesus talking, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jesus, the word of God. Every word of God is pure. Jesus is saying, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ladies and gentlemen, there are going to be a multitude of people who claim to know Jesus in their lifetime, who profess Jesus and did great works. And the Lord Jesus, according to the scripture, you see it right there in verse 23 of Matthew 7. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And, 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 and listeners, no matter who you are, whether you're listening via the recording or whether you're live, uh, our listeners in, in, in other nations, uh, uh, because people are getting so many different kinds of teachings about how to be saved, how to be born again. But there's only one way to be saved and be born again. And Jesus teaches that himself. So we want to give Jesus quality time and attention to his word. He says, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And, and, and you might want to ask yourself right now, do you know Jesus? And then the corollary question, does Jesus know you? Hey, preacher, hey, preacher man, preacher woman, uh, you're, you're very popular. you got 28,000 people following you and parking lot full of people. And, and, and you're, you're preaching uh, every Sunday. And uh, uh, does Jesus know you? Ladies and gentlemen, do not be fooled by numbers. Do not be fooled by the popularity of a ministry. Do not be fooled by uh, budgets and the millions of dollars and the great things that are being done in these ministries. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 there are people who are being deceived on a regular basis. There are, sheep, there are wolves in sheep's clothing. You must... I, 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 I adjure you, you must know that you know that you know that the pastor or the preacher that you're following knows Jesus. Do not allow yourself to be deceived. Many are deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Many will be deceived. And the sad thing is, Jesus will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let me finish up this passage. Verse 24, verses 24 through 29. Therefore, meaning because of what I just said to you, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, Jesus says, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Jesus is saying, everyone, that means me and you, and everyone who hears his sayings, who hears his word, but do not do his word. Jesus says, they shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon a rock. Please do not be foolish. And, and, 
Many people hear the word of God and they just blow it off. People are stubborn today. They are rebellious. They're caught up in pride. They want to do their own thing. They choose pastors to follow. They choose, and they idolize these pastors. And whatever these pastors say, that's what they're going to do, whether it's contrary to the word or not. They're going to follow these pastors. People have chosen, I'm talking about Christians who have chosen idols and are practicing idolatry. They don't care what the word of God says. They're going to follow these pastors to the teeth. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, my heart goes out to those uh, Christians in, in Honduras and El Salvador and Guatemala and, 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 and uh, nations who are walking thousands of miles just to get to the U.S. border hoping that the United States will have compassion on them and bring them in for temporary jobs, help them to be able to work and feed their hungry. And then you got somebody uh, in the White House saying, build a wall, keep them out. Keep them out. This same person who's saying build a wall, keep them out. Forget that his mother and his father came from a foreign country not too long ago. He forgets that his very wife uh, just recently was nat naturalized. Ladies and gentlemen, but yet the problem is, and the thing that I believe is hurting God's spirit is the number of pastors who are in agreement with this kind of rhetoric. And they, they take their eyes off the word of God. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Jesus said, walk in love. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But people in the body of Christ are following pastors who are divisive, who are haters. Many people in the body of Christ are following pastors who are racist. We've got a lot of racist pastors. They are racist. Uh, we got pastors who, uh, uh, if you're not white, uh, they don't want anything to do with you. And we've got a lot of people in the body of Christ who follow this kind of rhetoric. We've got people in the body of Christ, if you're white, they hate you. And we've got people bother, following uh, pastors who preach this kind of racism. And so we need to make sure we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, and that we are living the word of God because the deal, when the deal goes down, there are going to be a lot of embarrassed preachers, a lot of embarrassed church members, a lot of embarrassed people who believe their political party rather than believe Jesus. They embrace the platform of a political party. Whichever political wind blew, that's the way they went. And many of them did not stand on the word of God or are not standing on the word of God. And, they're, and they have the audacity to say, I'm saved. How can you be saved if you hate your neighbor? The word of God says, if you say, if a man says he loves God and hates his neighbor, he's a liar. I'm not calling you a liar. The Bible calls you a liar. If you say you love God and you hate Mexicans, if you say you love God and you hate Guatemalans, if you say you hate, you love God and you hate people from Afghanistan, if you say you love God and you hate people from Russia, you're a liar, and the truth is not in you. I don't care how many churches you build, how many uh, hungry you feed, how many blankets you give out, how many prayer calls you send out. If you hate others, you're a liar. That's the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Bible. Now, I know there are people who are hating on me for preaching this kind of gospel, but I preach the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Paul said. And so Jesus is saying, back to verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. If you do what Jesus says, Jesus says he will liken you unto a wise man or wise woman who built his or her house on a rock. And the rain descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these things of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man. The people who hear the word of God and refuse to do the word of God, no matter what they 
things you do in this life. Jesus says you'll be likened to a foolish man. We spilled this house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Verse 28 and 29, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And we need to hear the, God, the word of God so that Jesus can teach us as one having the authority. Uh, there, are, there are pastors teaching, but they don't have authority. There are pastors from in the pocket, the hip pocket of the Republican Party. There are pastors that are in the hip pocket of the Democratic Party. There are pastors who will say anything for money. There are pastors who are like the lamb who, who was riding his jackass to preach a, a word that God had not given him. Ladies and gentlemen, be very sure that who you listen to is of God. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing that is going to uh, destroy a lot of Christians and cause a great embarrassment at the judgment. They're going to stand before God and say, but Lord, Lord, I, I fed the hungry in your name, and I, I gave to the poor, and I, I knitted prayer blankets, and I knitted prayer caps, and I sent out prayer cloths, and I gave, I gave my, my money to feed the poor. I helped build churches, and the Lord will say, depart from me. I never knew you. I don't want Jesus to have to say that to me. I don't want Jesus to have to say that to you. Depart from me. I never knew you. Can you imagine the Lord Jesus Christ who hung, bled, and died on the cross for all mankind having to say the people he died for, depart from me. I never knew you. And it's all because people choose to follow whoever they want rather than follow Jesus. People fight this Bible We've got so many lazy Christians out there who don't read the Bible, got two or three or four Bibles in their home, got one on the dashboard or the seat of their car, but are too lazy to read the Bible. Uh, we've got people who, who are too, too lazy to pray for themselves. Oh, they run to the chat room. They run to the prayer, uh, prayer line and ask people to pray for them. But ladies and gentlemen, learn how to pray for yourself. Learn how to talk to God for yourself. Learn how to love God and, 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 and know that you know that you know that you know that God knows you. Uh, be, there, be there on time all the time. Develop a prayer time where you can commune with God. Study his word. Turn that TV off. Turn that cell phone off. Study the word of God. Read that scripture. And if you can't read, you can get the taste. You can get text, you can get recording, and, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You can get people to read the Bible to you. Faith comes when you hear the Word of God. But we've got so many lazy, so-called Christians out there who are too lazy to even set aside quality time to read the Word of God on a regular basis. And then, on top of that, we've got a lot of lazy Christians who want everybody else to pray for them. Pray for me. I've got a hangnail. Pray for me. I broke my nails. Pray for me. I don't know whether I should color my nails red or, or green. Pray for me. I don't know whether I should I dye my hair uh, brown or should I leave it blonde. I don't know what to do about this gray on my Should I tint it? Pray for me. Ladies and gentlemen, some of this stuff is just plain dumb, D-U-M-B. A lot of us plain stupid. We are wasting so much time on dumb stuff, and we're doing it all in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, draw a nigh unto the Lord while it is time. I say while it is time. Jesus uh, Christ is the solid rock. I'm talking about the solid rock today. And Jesus uh talks to us about a man who builds his house on a solid rock. And we're talking about the spiritual house. Uh, a spiritual house. Building a spiritual house. 
building your Christian life is like building a building. And unless you build your life on Jesus Christ and the Word of God, you got to go farther than confessing the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And that that means that means that, that word shall be saved. That's continuous action. That's the aorist text in the Greek language. That means you continue. You continue to be saved. You continue. And while you while you're continuing, there are things you need to do. One is study the word of God. I'm going to listen to, listen to uh, some things. Church membership and profession of, of sonship will not save you. Being a member of a church will not save you. There are a lot of people who are church members. Adolf Hitler was a church member. Al Capone was a church member. Idi Amin was a church member. Uh, 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 there are many people who are church members. The Bible says you must be born again. You don't get into the kingdom of God by joining the church. You don't get into the church of God by being uh, baptized. You must be born by the Spirit of God. You must have a relationship with Jesus. We're talking about developing a personal relationship with Jesus. From the time you profess Jesus to be your Lord, that's the time where you spend quality time getting to know this Jesus whom you profess as your Lord and Savior. That means studying. That means going to church. That means hanging out with people of like mine. That means developing a prayer life. That means learning how to pray. That means learning how to worship, learning how to praise God. These are things that the church is not doing, ladies and gentlemen. They are depending on what they get from a preacher on a Sunday morning. And if this preacher is off base, and many of them are, then you can imagine how frail, how weak uh, uh, people's spiritual houses are. Many are building their houses on sand. Many profess him but do not know him. Many do not study God's word. Many do not know how to pray in fellowship with the Father. Many are proud, stubborn, and teachable. I'm talking to some stubborn proud people right now. Uh, they, they're going to listen because you have respect for me. But a lot of you aren't even going to pay attention to this. But I'm not going to waste my words because I believe that God's word will not return unto him void. But I, I'm speaking to you stubborn, rebellious people. Nobody can teach you anything. It's time to humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself now and avoid the embarrassment of Jesus saying to you, depart from me, I never knew you. How can you claim to be saved, yet never take the time to learn about Christ? Huh? 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 Come on now. Ladies and gentlemen, I know churches. I know denominations. They don't even teach prayer. They don't have prayer meetings. They don't teach people how to pray in, the, in their denomination. No, uh, they teach about Jesus. They teach about Jesus. I know denominations, they don't even preach about the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you be a Christian? How, you can make, how can you make it from earth to heaven without the help of the Holy Ghost? How can you claim to be saved yet never take the time to learn about Christ? Jesus will say to many people, depart from me. I never knew you. Take the time now to know Christ. Study to show yourself approved unto God. I just want to uh, uh, end this message with just a little thing, a little bit about building a house. In various places, the Bible compares the life of a believer to the construction of a building. For instance, Jude says in verse 20, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Imagine your life is a building. You're building it for Jesus. You've got to build a strong house on a firm foundation. And, and make sure you're building your house on a firm foundation. Make sure you're building your Christian life on a firm foundation. Don't depend on somebody else's religion. Get to know God for yourself. 
1 Corinthians 3, 9 and 10 says, You are God's building. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Jesus has laid the foundation. You also are being built together for inhabitation of God in the Spirit. That's Ephesians 2.22. Our bodies are the temple of God. God wants to inhabit us by the Holy Spirit. He wants to live in this house that we're building, this, 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 this house, this house of flesh. The Lord wants to live in us. And we've got to give him the opportunity to live in us. So that when the storms of life come, you're not going to be blown away. When the winds and the rains come, you're not going to be blown off the map because you're built on a solid, firm foundation. But if you're not studying the Word of God, if you're not praying, if you're not worshiping, if you're not pressing into the presence of the Lord, your house will be blown away. Ladies and gentlemen, I know so many Christians, the first wind that blows, they're blown off the map. The first time they get sick or when they lose their job, when their house is threatened for foreclosure or their car is repossessed, they go off the deep end. So many Christians want to go back into drugs. All over this nation we have this opioid epidemic. And, 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 and many Christian families are dealing with members of their households who are hooked on opioids, who are hooked on alcohol, who are hooked on drugs. Yet many of these people go to church. There's more to it than going to church. We've got to build a spiritual house so that the Holy Spirit can grow large in us, so that whatever the devil puts on us, the Holy Spirit will raise up a standard against them. The Bible says, when the enemy comes upon us like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So we're building a building. And just like buildings are built, um, buildings have to have a firm foundation. There was a man in Israel, he got a permit to build an apartment house. He got a permit to build two stories, but he decided to build a third story. He was greedy for money. He wanted to have more, apart more apartments in that building. And so he built a third story on a two-story building. And then the building began to tip and the lean. And then it fell. Ladies and gentlemen, it's like that commercial we see. Uh, uh, past the jelly or something, past the, the, the dessert, and the dessert is, is taped down to the table because the table is leaning to one side and the whole house is leaning to one side. Ladies and gentlemen, many houses are leaning to one side because we are not building our spiritual house on the firm foundation. Many of us have been building our house on what Pastor So-and-So says or what brother so-and-so says, or what mama says, or what daddy says, or, or rather than what the word of God says. But ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to get into the word and read the word of God for yourself. Every word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, every word of God is pure. Everything written from Genesis to Revelation is the word of God. Read the Word of God, hear it, believe it, and live it. And this way you will prevent yourself from being destroyed. You'll prevent yourself from being destroyed. Jesus Christ is the solid rock. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, when he asked uh, Peter and the disciples, who do men say that I am? Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah raised from the dead. But well, who do you say that I am? Peter Nothing. said, you are the rock. You are the Messiah. You are the anointed one. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father which is in heaven has revealed this to you. And on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, the Roman Catholics and many others say, well, that means he built the church on Peter. That's why Peter was the first pope. No, 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 I'll contraire. Jesus did not build the church on Simon Peter. 
Simon Peter was a sinner, flesh and blood, just like you and me. Jesus uh, was not uh, 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 that naive to declare that he had built his church on people. And many of you have allowed your church to be built on the reputation of pastor so-and-so or brother so-and-so or mother or father or sister so-and-so or what your friends believe or what your co-workers believe. No, no, no. Build your faith on Jesus Christ. And, and when the storms of life come, you'll find that your house is built on solid rock, not on sand. So many people, uh, uh, because they do not study the Word of God, they do not practice worshiping the Lord, do not praise Him, do not have a prayer life, do not seek the Lord in all their ways, their houses are being blown away because their houses are made on sinking sand. I remember when I was a little kid, the story of the three little pigs. One little pig built his house up with straw. The other built his house with uh, uh, sticks. And the third built his house with bricks. And then they were all living in their houses. Then here came Big Bear Wolfie. Wolfie said to the pig who built his house with straw, let me in, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And Wolfie huffed and he puffed and he blew that pig's house in. It was made out of straw. And that pig ran to his brother's house, the one who made his house with sticks. The wolf went, went to that house. Let me in, let me in. The pig said, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Wolf said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew his house in. And those two pigs ran to their big brother who built his house with bricks. The wolf said, let me in, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And the wolf huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed. I know you like this story, Wesker. I used to tell you this all the time when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. And he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed, puffed, and he couldn't blow the house in. Ladies and gentlemen, the wolf is a symbol of the devil coming against the people of God. How is your house built? Let me ask you this. I'm not talking about the place you live in the apartment or the edifice you live in. I'm talking about the body that you live in that houses the Holy Spirit. You profess Jesus to be your Lord. Now are you studying the Word of God to learn about this Lord and Savior who died for you? Do you learn what God has to say to you? Do you learn and do you practice what He says? God says in His Word, I know the plans I have for you. Many people are being destroyed because they do not know God's plans for them because they do not study the Word of God. In other words, they have not taken the time out after they confess that they were saved. They don't take the time out to build their spiritual house on solid rock. The wolf is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Satan is the wolf. Adverse times are coming. The devil's coming to destroy. The Bible says that when the devil comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. If you build your house upon a solid rock, the devil cannot destroy your house. He cannot blow your house in. He can huff and he can puff, but he won't blow your house in. Be sure, be very sure, ladies and gentlemen, that your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Choose to build your house on a solid rock. Choose to build your spiritual house. Choose to teach your spouse and your children about Jesus. Choose to encourage them to stick with Jesus all the days of their lives. Choose to eat the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Study this Bible. Develop a relationship with Jesus. 
develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Learn how to let Jesus teach you and live the Word of God. Don't depend on anyone, ladies and gentlemen. I say don't depend on anyone to get you into heaven. Only Jesus can do that. But if you do not take the time now to build your house on a solid foundation, you may have to face these bitter words, these horrible words, depart from me. I never knew you. I pray that none of you will be lost. I don't want to be lost. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Ladies and gentlemen, no turning back. Though the Republican Party turn back, though the Democratic Party turn back, though America go under, I will not turn from Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I've made up my mind. I've got a made up mind. Well, you know, Pastor, evil times are going to come. Satan's going to test you because of what you just said. Yes, but I know, I know, and I know that greater is he in me than he that's in the world. So I want you to stand fast, stand firm, stand firm on your confession. Praise God. Praise God. It's not by the works that you do. It's by your trust in the Lord. The songwriter said, I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I'm going to do what the Lord says do. Ladies and gentlemen, take the time out. Take the time out. Set aside study time. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Set aside prayer time. Take time out from your busy schedule to talk pray and talk with God. Have a little talk with Jesus. We'll make it all right. Let Jesus fix it for you. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And ladies and gentlemen, get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you, to fill you with his presence. Worship God. Take time each day to worship and thank and praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I'll just share with you a message, Christ the Solid Rock. Next week we're going to talk about how to build on that solid rock. How to build on that solid rock. We're going back to basics this year. And uh, each of these messages will be found at my YouTube station, YouTube channel, so you can review them. We're going to spend the entire year teaching the basics of the faith so that no one needs to be left behind. No one needs to be asked out. Praise God. Continue to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your past. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. Bless all of the people. Thank you, Lord, for all who hear this message. Meet every need they have. Oh, God, you're so wonderful. And we thank you that you love us all. God, we ask that you heal the sick, heal the roads that are bound. Oh, God, meet every need. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Let the church say, 